So apparently it's uh, it's summer where I live. I don't know if you can hear that ice cream van. It it comes every single every single day, raining, sunny, doesn't seem to matter. Um, I've got some cowbells going on. <laughs> Pretty, pretty abstract. Someone, uh, a friend of mine, keeps asking. Um, they are waiting for the cowbell to be used. Uh, I don't really use the cowbell much because it's a bit of a weird bit of. I mean, I like a cowbell as much as anyone. 808 cowbells are great. 707 cowbells are great. Um, yeah, who, who doesn't love a cowboy? But the, ki- the cowboy? <laughs> you don't want to love a cowboy. Uh, well, maybe you do. But a cowbell. Um, yeah, I mean, the cowbell on this is a bit of a weird beast and trying to make something. Uh, a little bit more interesting with the cowbell. Got to say, I've kind of struggled. I'm going to keep saying cowbell. I know. Um, yeah. So what I've got going on is uh, some. I mean, I have to have the kick drum running. Uh, basically, why did I do that? Basically, um, the things, the main things that are probably worth noting are, I've got some 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 control data going on with uh with uh an output so something i do occasionally i haven't done for a while is i can run the output audio output into the control in so you often get in the forums uh wouldn't it be good if there was more lfos on the rhythm well there kind of is if you can run individual outputs audio outputs and then set your control input and run expression learn um and it can it can read it um seems to be you have to relearn it each time you boot up or I don't know I think that might have been working as it was actually um, so when you when you basically set the learning and then you want to go to your control room in and then you can you know set these to whatever so if you can hear um, So basically every time a bit of audio hits then um, you know it's going to change whatever setting you are and you can kind of toggle through these um, you can kind of toggle through these by pushing down so you know you can flick through and decide what you want to set it to and then you can you know assign it to stuff um, this uh, obviously opens up you could potentially like load up an LFO like sample or an LFO from something even maybe this and then have it as a sample to modulate things obviously it's not as complex as what LFOs you can have built in but you know gets you some modulation which I think is all you kind of really want a lot of the time um, so it's kind of got a lot of that stuff going on there um, the other thing that I've got going on is um, the the weird symmetry thing in the distortion so this kind of there was a lot of ringing going on with the cowbell and I kind of wanted us to control that so I've kind of used this symmetry um, to try to sort of deal with that so it doesn't kind of go crazy so if I turn it I mean it's if I turn it to, to zero you know what I mean I mean it still sounds kind of fine 
Actually, it probably sounds better. It depends on your taste, but. So the other thing, um, yeah, depending on your, your volume, this is also going to affect it. So like the, the overall volume seems to affect the symmetry. Um, also, this affects the feedback and other things I've noticed. So if we kind of dial back the volume, it goes clean. Pump it up, it starts cutting out. So that's kind of interesting for those kind of gritty kind of textures. Um, that I'd probably, you know, use a different sound for more honestly than the cowbell. So the cowbell sounds a bit crazy. Um, the other thing though, with the modulation I thought was quite neat, was um, because it's basically mapping off the audio and not like a fixed LFO that's like really, you know, sturdy control data. Every time, like there's inconsistency there. So every time the audio hits, it's constantly shifting. So I'm gonna let this play for just like mi a minute. And then uh, you can just hear it's um, there's no like um, probability or anything on the triggers. It's just it's just a basic like you know it's nothing fancy. We just got like some notes that are triggering the cowbell and some notes on the on the kick drum. I think maybe there's some yeah there's some trick mutes that I'm just kind of picking out. So I'm just picking out one and seven and ten by the looks of it on the cowbell. So nothing nothing crazy. Um, yeah, like I say, no probabilities, no like crazy automation or nothing that's going to change over time. And yet it does seem to change on its own. You can probably hear it already, but I'm going to let you listen to it for a minute and you see what, see what you mean. See what I mean. I'm gonna turn a reverb up on it as well because you get those textures come a lot, come come across a lot stronger, um, and you can hear just how uh, how the frequencies are really different. To check this out. So it's almost like some weird abstract flute shit going on. So, um, so I didn't like set out to do this. I mean, what I actually set out to do was, uh, um, what was it I set out to do? I set out to kind of create some flangerous sort of effects. So, 
I Virginia had a tempo really high, and I was playing around with like um, you know, flanges are basically like a del like a delayed signal, and then like multiples of that delay on the feedback, right? That kind of gives it that ringing sound. So you can kind of get some similar sort of qualities with that, with uh, with the rhythm, but it's limited by its tempo because you can only go so fast, and the the delay is fixed to the tempo, even though you can kind of manipulate that. So I was kind of playing around with that for a bit, um, and it's pretty good. But um, yeah, I started and started trying to modulate the um, trying to modulate the flanger a bit more to try and create some movement. And this is when I hooked up the uh, control data and was like, "Wait a minute, can I can I you know can I make it just a little bit more flanger like?" And, and immediately got into this really abstract space that um, I can only assume or take a live in permanently. Um, but whenever I seem to step into that, it gets a bit it gets a bit quirky, even for my taste. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to share it. I wanted to document it. Um, it's got something going on. Um, and for the cowbell as well, like it's not, you know, the cowbell in it is not the most versatile, uh, what do they call it, engine or sound source. Um, you've not got like, you've not got a massive amount of uh, options here, right? But it combined with that reverb and, you know, short, um, short delays, uh, as you can see, um, and just with that modulation, uh, it really works into some interesting areas. So the stuff I've got modulated, if it wasn't already obvious, I've got like a cowbell. I mean, I don't know what that is. One of the one of the cowbells is tuned, and then the other one, the second oscillator, detuned. And I've also got um, uh, the the panning. Uh, I think it was the uh, the width of the delay is based off this as well, and 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 this setting, which is on zero, so it's not doing anything, but. Um, this is the other cool thing about the control room, con uh, control in page or the modulation setup page, is you can have you know you can be modulating any sound and any if you know and the effect from one sound, um, which is pretty neat. So you could have like you know I could have the I could have the bass drum on control room, uh, control in two, and then you know you come out of this and go to control in two and you could set up a whole other set of parameters there, which is pretty neat. It just puts the rhythm in a completely different territory than what you're normally in. You know, that kind of like, let's make a drum pattern. Um, it gets pretty boring quickly, I find, with the rhythm. Um, a Roland R8, which this is actually sat on, uh, which you can't see in the camera, but underneath this is an R8. You, I could listen to that as a drum machine all day, but it's designed to sound cool, whereas this, you've got to work it. So I think this is quite a cool, interesting way to make stuff um, sound uh sound like they've been worked which it certainly is so you can hear some crazy stereo stuff here That was relearning, so it's basically taking the output of whatever the cowbell is at that state, which of course, if you've manipulated, it's going to change. And then you press expression learn, you relearn, it changes all the settings again, and then you can reverse it as well.
play stuff going on. So there's a lot of feedback stuff going on there, as you can hear. Yeah. Crackly, yeah. Uh, how many of your rhythms crackle like that? <laughs> it's a great feature. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, I kind of I was working on this earlier this morning, and um, I had to go out. Uh, wasn't sure if this was going to be uploaded, honestly. And then come back and hit play, and was like, "Nah, it's just pretty. It's pretty nuts." So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. But uh, some crazy stuff. Um, hook up your audio outs to your control ins. Hit expression learn. Whack some control data on control in. Uh, assign it to some stuff, and then play around. Um, it makes, you know, adding stuff, uh, ma making changes much, much easier and intuitive. Um, I really like doing it. Um, and also, yeah, try some, some more basic LFOs. I think it's something I need to try myself um, and see if you can make more than one FO, LFO or two LFOs on this machine. It's pretty cool. Right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, just.